All right, so a few days ago, I recorded a video on a bunch of quality of life features that Texas Chainsaw Massacre should get. There was 15 in total, but we just got patch notes saying that on Tuesday, most likely on Tuesday, there's going to be a patch coming. Two things in that patch are already getting fixed that were on my quality of life improvement thing, such as the car battery. But I also dragged out the video to be like 40 minutes or something, so I've just deleted it at this point, and I'm going to go through it here. The, t the quality of life features I want to see in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and hopefully 10 minutes or less. So that was a fucking lie. So anyways, I want to say before we get started, this is my opinion. So I might not have everyone agree with me on it. Some of these might be balance related. They might be a little sided on one side or another because I think one side is out of balance compared to the other. And that's okay because again, it's my opinion. But I do hope the devs look at these quality of life improvements and want to add them to the game. So anyways, for number one, I think the game would do a lot better if it had better stat details on perks and abilities. Let us know what stacks and what doesn't stack. We shouldn't have to go to the Twitter or go to the Reddit, see what a dev posted about what stacks and what doesn't stack. Because if you've seen that post, Barely anything in this game actually stacks. So if you're putting two perks on that might up your damage or something, it probably doesn't stack. There's only two perks apparently that do stack. All of the characters' abilities and upgrades, like for example, Leatherface, you can go on the left side and get a shorter heat cooldown, right? Or overheat cooldown. Those don't actually stack. None of the abilities in the game actually stack. You have to go on separate routes, like get a right node, middle node, left node. If you just go up on the same tier twice, nothing happens. It actually doesn't stack. It's a complete waste. I don't know why the game lets you even do it in the first place then. But yeah, give us the details on these stats. I want to know what something's base stats are so that we don't, like when we upgrade something in the ability tree from whatever percent it starts at to now it's at 55%. What was the base for that though? Was the base 50%? Was the base 30%? We don't know. We don't know a lot of stats on what we're even upgrading in the game. This also goes for attribute points. The only one I've really figured out is blood harvesting. Like 25, I'm going to make a video on this, but 25 blood harvesting gets you 100 um, in your max blood vial. Every time you grab a max blood bucket, you get 20 blood because you have 25 blood harvesting. That's the only thing I could figure out from the attribute point system, but I want to know the exact stats on this stuff. Like how long is a stun if you put in 40 strength? What is the exact difference between having 50 endurance and 45 endurance? Is it even worth, can I take those five points off and put them somewhere else? Without like proper testing, that's the only way we can find stuff out right now. And I hope they change that and actually let us know exactly what we're upgrading. All right, next up, glowing outlines or visuals for when abilities are activated. This is huge because uh, there's a big problem in the game right now and her name starts with A and ends with A. It's Anna. Anna, oh my gosh. If you've seen my YouTube shorts, if you've seen my Twitter posts, Reddit posts on Anna, they are insane. The things I have recorded three full max damage build chainsaw revs on her while she's in a hitchhiker trap nine more hits with my max damage build and then she finally dies it's crazy she can tank way too much right now but this isn't a nerf anna um thing this is a quality of life improvement i think when people use their abilities especially something like anna leland obviously can't get something like this but, but anna specifically and johnny they should have a little outline so you know not to waste your time with them, right? If Anna glowed a little bit when she activated her ability, you'd know what's going on. You, you'd know you're not doing that much damage to her. Because right now, visually, you can get like six hits on her and you're like, did she use her ability or not? I don't know. Did I just get six really good hits on her or did I do nothing? If she glowed, you'd know. Also, when I roam around as Johnny, sometimes people are like, what are you doing? You're not doing anything. When you're actually tracking footprints or you're looking around for footprints, See, they can't tell that you're actually doing a ton of work by finding footprints and tracking them down because Johnny doesn't do anything differently. He's just walking around looking like he's doing absolutely nothing. If his eyes glowed or if he had a little outline when he was using his ability and tracking, I think that would help out a lot as well. It doesn't even need to be like shown to the victims. It could be, might as well be. But at least so that your other family members think you're actually doing something because you are. It's kind of like Cook. If Cook was just standing there when using his ability, he'd look like he's just AFK doing absolutely nothing, right? But luckily enough, Cook does have something like this where he enters a new animation and he like puts out his hand and listens in. If he was just standing there looking like he's AFK, it would be a problem, I feel like. So as a quality of life, when people have active abilities, highlight them in some way. You don't need to see them through walls or anything, but at least give them a different animation or, or something. 
so people can tell that they're actually doing something if the ability is like impactful to the game. Next up, a grandpa wake up noise meter. Imagine on the victim side, if you could actually see how much noise all your teammates are making and it's filling up a meter until grandpa wakes up. It could be a yellow bar at the top of the screen. It could even be the what's already in the game, the little icon where he fills up. It could be that, but at the beginning of the game, if it fills up all the way, grandpa's awake. Right now, it's an invisible indicator. We really don't know how much noise you have to make to allow him to wake up. So it'd be nice to know. Good quality of life. Next up, the grandpa cutscene should be a banner that pops up like a lot of other things do in the game and not a full screen cutscene. Five Nights at Freddy's jump scare. That's it, that's pretty self-explanatory. Right now, it messes up the game flow so much. It gets really annoying if you're just looking forward, you're not looking forward to it every single game. You know it's coming. <laughs> It just, it just feels bad. It feels the worst on Leatherface because he's bugged right now where it pops up and then he overheats his chainsaw instantly. So that's bad. But even without that, regardless, the grandpa cutscene, full screen on, on my in my face, interrupting the game, just feels so bad. You know it's coming. You're just waiting for it. And then it happens and uh, I don't like it. I don't think anyone likes it. I haven't heard anyone that actually likes it. So it's no hate towards the devs. They didn't it doesn't seem like they made a whole cinematic for it or anything. It just takes the camera in game because suddenly you can see your own characters in the background of grandpa. So it just takes the camera and puts it there. Hopefully people didn't work too hard on it. It's not cinematic. So hopefully they won't be too mad if they just remove it from the game and a banner gets placed in instead. A banner already pops up. It says victims have awakened grandpa or whatever. So they can just keep that. And yeah. Also for the intro of the match where you always have to hear someone getting chainsawed open at the beginning and screaming in your ears and it hurts really bad it's gotten repetitive after about 50 hours 60 hours even during the tech test it was kind of repetitive it's a good tutorial i think people should be forced to watch that intro at least like maybe 15 20 times but after that get rid of the intro it is uh i don't want to watch someone get chainsawed at the beginning of every single match i just want to get in the game we already waited in the lobby long enough so it just kind of feels bad that you have to just sit there and keep waiting and waiting and then you gotta watch your family member or victim in an animation for a second. I'd much rather just have the Texas Chainsaw logo and a black screen or something, or maybe the main menu looking thing where it's like the house and the birds flying. That all looks really nice. That's beautiful. Then you can have like the red flashing Leatherface logo or the chainsaw loading logo, anything like that. Nice, plain, simple. Um, you don't have to watch the same thing over and over. It just gets repetitive and it gets kind of annoying to watch. Also, I kind of feel like doors and gates and all that kind of need a better visual indicator to show when a lock is broken. I know it has like the little latch thing that goes up and down, but that's about it. And it's really hard to see a lot of the time, in my opinion. Like I still find myself a lot of the time going straight up to the door just to double check because from far away, you can't really see if the latch is up and down. Maybe that's balancing um and they want to keep it that way that's just a small really small thing it really doesn't need to be changed but at least they have the visual there if they didn't have any visual that'd be an issue but i do wish you could like maybe go in family vision and they would just show it if you have a line of sight of it and you're close enough maybe it glowed in yellow the, the little latch next up i think the game would benefit a lot from a system that would add a grandpa perk to the match that someone already has that they already got out of their skill tree. Sometimes you have like three grandpa perks available. Two people bring ones that you already have and you can go back into your loadout and swap to a new grandpa perk. But instead of having to swap every game because people keep copying your same exact grandpa perks, might as well just make it so that the game just auto fills that grandpa perk with whatever someone else has. Because a lot of the time you just get two people with duplicate grandpa perks and you can't do anything about it. You can't change their perks for them. You just see that they both have the same perk and you're like hoping please go back to the loadout screen so that you can change and uh, so that the match will have three grandpa perks but no one changes and then you're left with only two grandpa perks and i think if it just took something from one of their inventories and put it in as a grandpa perk that'd be really nice or during the loading screen that's where people pick their grandpa perks they don't put it in the loadout you pick right there you have all the, the whole list of them and you just click or however many you have unlocked you don't need the whole list of them obviously it could work the exact same way, but it at least would gray out the picked grandpa perks so that you can't pick the same one. That would help a lot. I think even though the car battery is getting changed, I think a good change to the game would be allowing any family member, upstairs of course, not Leatherface, to choose their own spawn location. 
it doesn't need to be everywhere on the map. It could be out of the spawn locations that already exist in the game right now. Johnny spawns right outside the slaughterhouse. Sissy spawns at the car battery behind the slaughterhouse. Hitchhiker spawns on the slaughterhouse at the generator. But out of all those spawns, if you play as Johnny or whatever, you should be able to spawn where Hitchhiker spawns. You should be able to pick out of any of those spawn locations. This isn't a big thing that needs to be changed at all, but I feel like being able to pick would be kind of nice, especially if you know the routes you want to take, make sure certain doors are locked, pick up blood bags that you know the spots of, close certain areas off. Being forced to spawn in a location that you know is just a big waste of time for you kind of sucks. I think one of the worst offenders of this is obviously Johnny on the gas station, who spawns in the front of the gas station where there is absolutely nothing for Johnny to do there, especially since that map usually has a cook on it. You're both going to spawn there. Someone has to run across the entire map to go turn on the car battery. Not since that's getting updated, of course, that doesn't matter. But you guys are both in the same spot. Only one of you is going to be able to pick up all those blood bags. Someone has to still run across the map if they want more blood bags. So that's all Johnny can do at the beginning, get blood bags and close um, gaps. So, or not gaps, uh, crawl spaces. So picking a spawn, allowing Johnny to actually spawn somewhere useful where he can do stuff would be very nice. This one has been highly requested, so I'm just going to go through it really quick. A ping system would be very nice. I have chat muted all the time because I don't... I've heard people spamming the n-word in their mic. I've heard terrible things, and I just mute everyone at this point. I've gotten really good at typing, though. Like, Anna just dropped down the well in, in the... whatever, you know? But a ping system would be even quicker, especially if I'm mid-chase. You don't need to be able to fully ping someone and outline them like a cook level 3 ability, right? But being able to ping objects, show that the fuse box is open, ping. Ping a well because someone went down it. Ping a door that's open and someone might have just went through. Ping the Leatherface barricade on the top of the family house upstairs because Leatherface never breaks it and it completely blocks off the entire upstairs for Johnny and the cook. That would be a godsend. Just, yeah, being able to ping Leatherface barricades would be so nice. So that's my one of my biggest quality of life improvements. A ping system would be very helpful. I know that's probably hard to program. I wonder if they're even programming it right now because it's been highly requested since the tech test. Maybe they'll surprise us one day. Iframes and animations need to be more synced up. They need to line up way better than they are right now because a lot of the time you just swing straight through people and it's very annoying. They have ethereal bodies, I, I don't understand. I've pulled people out of lockers, I've seen people get up off the ground and I still can't swing them. They've dropped down from wells, I still can't hit them. I waste stamina, they get a free escape. Makes no sense. As soon as they spam a crawl space and then they open it and enter it without being hit is super annoying i think iframes need to be worked on heavily it's definitely a problem with iframes but maybe also they could just do something with spamming through crawl spaces and, and gaps very quickly because that causes infinites they could fix that as well but i think just tuning iframes in general would help a ton because again that's quality of life that's just gonna make the game feel better it's not gonna really buff the family too much. I think it'll just seriously improve how good and reactive the game feels. Because losing to something that's out of your control, like an iframe, sucks. Another quality of life feature that kind of goes with the first one where you can see better stat details. Um, you can already see people's uh, perk loadouts at the beginning of the match. Might as well add something where you can, I'm just saying might as well, even though it's probably very hard to add, but allowing people to highlight other people's perks so that you can read them because it's kind of hard to get used to a game that has like hundreds of new perks they all the icons kind of look very similar to each other even i sometimes am loading into games and i have no idea what certain perks are especially on the victim side i feel like there's a lot there i can highlight them and know what people are bringing i feel like that would help out a lot and that would just be nice to to know what they're bringing in a year from now we'll know every single perk and exactly what it does and all the stats on them without having to highlight them but Either way, I feel like that'd be very helpful. Another quality of life, I think the key bindings uh, need to be worked on. They're they're broken right now. They, they they just released it so that you can actually customize your key bindings. I've sent a bunch of things into the devs showing that they don't work. For some reason, when you rebind like your interact key on victim and family side, it just breaks. So I've rebound E to F on the family side. But when you go to the generator, and the, uh, yeah, I think it's just the generator. When you're turning it back on, it still says to spam E. Or it says to spam whatever button you bound it to, but you have to spam a different one instead. So you just break the generator a couple times and then you figure out, oh wait, the game is lying to me. My key bindings are lying to me. I have to spam some other button to turn on the generator. It's very weird. But yeah, that's broken. And then on the victim side, key bindings are still broken as well. I wanted F to open doors, but if you do that, 
there's no option in the key bindings to rebind the latching doors, so you're gonna accidentally latch doors instead of opening them, and it's gonna be very bad. So yeah, you can't rebind latching, you can't rebind the chat, you can't rebind the family vision mode. You can only do one binding of things, which a lot of games these days have two bindings, so you can have one on your mouse, one on your keyboard, that helps out a lot. There's no toggles right now, you can't toggle crouch, you can't toggle sprint, you can't double tap shift to sprint burst, you have to press space or you have to bind it to some weird key, which is just a weird mechanic in general. I feel like you should be able to double tap shift, like in most games that have a secondary sprint option. So just keyboard customization in general for controllers as well. All that stuff would be very nice quality of life improvements. Another thing which I think they're gonna change, I, th I think Leatherface is getting changed in the future is they said they're working on him or maybe the basement. Which I still don't understand the Leatherface problem with the game, why a lot of people don't want to play him. He's obviously the most powerful, he has the most speed, most damage, and he deals it the quickest. He's the only one that can break barricades, he's, he's the only one that can break cross, cross spaces, he can thrust through gaps. He's the only one that can do a lot of things. He can, he's the only one that can break doors as well. He's the toughest, speediest, his endurance doesn't waste when you swing your weapon. He's crazy good. So why a lot of people don't want to play him, I don't know. Anyways, when he's getting constantly stunned and stuff, I feel like he should be able to- uh, I saw this in a tech test, the first game I ever played of this, I thought this was a thing, but it wasn't. I thought he should be able to swing his chainsaw, non-revved, and deal very little damage, maybe not even get blood for it. That would help in situations where people are just waiting by you with an unrevved chainsaw, and you can't do anything about it, you're forced to rev, but then they're gonna backstab you. That stuff is really annoying, and I think he should just be able to scare them off a little bit by being able to hit them. People want them to add a whole sledgehammer to the game. I don't think that's going to happen. That's a lot to add, just using the same animations for the normal chainsaw attack, but unrevved. I think that's a lot easier for the devs to add, so I'm trying to be realistic here and say that. The sledgehammer could always come in a future um, execution if you want. This is a huge one, actually. I, I lied earlier saying something else was my, my top one. This is my top one because this is so obnoxious. You're chasing a victim, right? Or two victims are behind each other, or one's behind the other. When passing through a gap, or over a barricade, or through a crawl space, why do you have to wait the entire animation? Like, especially for Leatherface barricades, okay. You're trying to break the barricade, someone hops over, you can't break it, not even when they're halfway, not even when they're on the ground. After they stand up and start walking away, that's when you can start breaking the barricade. Why? That's another thing with just like the iframes and animations and annoyances in this game. It can feel so clunky and slow paced, at sometimes, just because of these long waiting times that you have to do, where you have to wait for them to fully be through the gap before you can traverse through it. You should be able to directly just chase right behind them, get through the gap whenever it's available, not when they're fully through it. And yeah, I think everyone knows what I'm talking about, but it is a big annoyance in this game. Sometimes it honestly feels, I mean, victims are faster than you in a lot of ch cases and a lot of chases, but yeah, not catching up through crawl spaces and gaps and just being infinite around, that's so bad. And it all comes down to not even the iframes, but just when you're allowed to traverse through them. I think the waiting time is way too long. Seeing someone right in front of you staring at them and not being able to interact is probably the worst possible feeling in a game. So yeah, touch up on the animation, touch up on the timing of these things, touch on the, uh, touch up on the iframes and the speed at which you can interact with people that are right in front of you, and the game will feel so much better. Another quality of life, I think the game needs some slowdown at the beginning. Games are going by too fast, and that's maybe what's so addicting about this game, it's it's fast paced for the most part. Well, that's a lot of slow things in this game, but in general the game needs a slow down. Whether it's what a lot of people have been thinking, no abilities in the basement at the start of the game. Whether it's an idea that I could come up with such as victims at the start of the game have to go after a health bottle, a small one. They could add, even add four more to the basement if they want. But you start out the match injured just enough where a small health vial, even if it's glowing across the basement and you have to go get that one, that heals you enough. That would slow down the game. Because you're tied up down there, you fall, you hit your head, you like slam it very hard when you fall, by the way. I feel like you should start out injured. It's not like Leatherface is going to catch up to you anyways. Usually there's so much stuff down there. Having to go after a health vial at the beginning of the match, I don't think like I don't think it would be such a bad idea. It it make people want to play more stealthy because if you wake up grandpa and the other family members start coming down while you're already 75% uh, health or 80% health, which isn't that much, but still, if you start the match like that, you're gonna want to play stealthy. It'll incentivize stealth. It'll be a slowdown mechanic so that everyone else can get 
started in the match and you don't have to worry about rushes as much because if they do rush they probably didn't get their health file that's glowing across the basement i don't know that's just my thing but um obviously they could do slow down in any sort of way i'm sure the devs are seeing the problems in rushing right now and wanting to fix that whether it's making stealth a better option or just making it so you can't rush somehow maybe the first basement door requires two lock picks to break i don't know Another quality of life, the fuse box, I feel like could be a much more fun and interactive mechanic. My favorite mechanic in the game right now is the valve. I love the valve system. The back and forth of it, you, you the, the victims turn it on, you go, you have to turn it off, it stops, you can see the little meter on it. I've 99'd it before, it's crazy. The games get super intense around the valve, but that is so much fun being able to interact with the victims in that way. and disable their exit it's like a, the whistle's blowing it's about to go off but you can disable it takes a while but you can do it the fuse it just gets rushed every single game and it, you have to use a lock pick to open it but they don't have to do any sort of lock picking mini game no animation like that it uses a lock pick but it doesn't have the door mini game and a cook can't place a lock on it for some reason hitchhikers don't want to place traps under the fuse box because bomb squad exists a complete counter to the the hitchhiker that is incentivizing all hitchhikers to instead hide their traps because you're not going to be able to bomb squad a hidden trap so maybe this is a problem with perks like bomb squad which there is a big problem with but those shouldn't exist i'm going to make a perk tier list eventually that's going to be s tier because it, s for shouldn't exist but yeah i'm ranting about something else anyways the fuse box should be more interactive like the valve system where family members can interact with it somehow maybe the fuse box gets changed into a system where two victims have to go to two different fuse boxes and press them at the same time whether it's pulling a lever boom and boom over here so you have to actually communicate for it same with family members they can turn it off by going to two different locations and pushing levers at the same time and then it disables it or they could keep it mostly the same and just make it so that the fuse breaks after it's used they also have to do a locking minigame just to stop it from being rushed so quickly, even though locking minigames can be done in like 8 seconds or in 1 second by Akani. Either way, that would slow it down just a little bit. You can make it so that the fuse box can be reclosed by a family member, or the fuse can be taken out and reclosed, or just make it so the fuse can be taken out in general. All would be very nice features. I think they're going to change it. I'm hoping they're going to change it. Just don't know exactly what they're going to do yet. Also, it kind of looks like I'm reading a script. I'm literally just looking at myself on OBS right here, so... I don't know why I'm not looking at the camera, but either way. Another thing here, victims should be able to see other victims' health bars. Whether it's when holding a health vial and going up to them and you see a little circle of their health or you see something that indicates their health. Or just on the HUD, you can see all the victims' health. That could be a thing too, but might be a little immersion breaking. I think at least while holding a vial of health, going up to someone, you should be able to see their health. Because there are perks in this game that make it so that when you heal someone, you get healed back. Or when you heal something, so-and-so so happens, right? There's a whole stat tracking how many times you've healed individual victims. I bet for most of you, it's at zero. Because you never know when to heal someone in this game. Unless you saw them directly in front of your eyes get slammed a billion times by a cook or something. You have no idea that they're injured. So knowing that would be very nice and incentivize team healing. Because right now, I'm pretty sure most people just don't do that. For the most part, that is it. That is my quality of life improvements for the game. Of course, there are things that need to be changed other than quality of life things here. Sissy's broken right now. Johnny's really good, but should probably have some kind of game slowdown like the cook has, which I've come up with some ideas I've already shared. Or just he needs some kind of secondary ability besides just foot tracking. But anyways, that is my list. Let me know if you agree. Let me know your biggest quality of life list down below or just one improvement that you want to see on the game. I could talk about the gas station exit and stuff, but honestly, gas station has been my favorite map as family right now. Playing as cook at least, guarding that area. I don't know why. That area always has the valve and the fuse box near it, so you can guard all those things at once. Gas station doesn't feel too imbalanced anymore to me. The door obviously needs a change because there's no point of going to the cattle grid generator exit compared to the normal door. So it needs a change, but it's not at the top of my list right now, and that's not quality of life, I don't think. I don't know if that fits in this video. I just said it anyways, so there you go. But yeah, let me know your list down below. Subscribe, leave a like if you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next Texas Chainsaw video very soon, hopefully, maybe gameplay.